<laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, but once again, it's um, such a privilege and an honor and a blessing to be here with you guys one more time. I, I, this feeling never gets old, you know, and I just love coming up here and, and being used by the Lord, being led by the Spirit, and just being able to share a word with you guys. Um, today, well, this, this past week just marked a year since I saw the Lord's promise in my life come to pass, and that is, I had been prophesied over, I had prayed over, that soon I will be preaching the word of Jesus, and soon I will be spreading the love of God, and this month, this, this preaching marks a year since I exactly did that, and since that promise came to pass, so, so glory to God. And at the same time, we, we come up here, and I know I've spoken to many people, even when we come up here to lead worship, to host, or we're serving at the door, is that sense of unworthiness that you get. Is that sense of, I'm not worthy of this, I'm not, to, who am I to be here, right? Romans 8, 37 to 39 says, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Amen. Jesus our Lord. We, we are able to do this. We are enabled to do this through his love. And of course, as we enter the month of February, you know, we know, many know it as love, a month of love. And today I'm not here to talk about a brotherly love or a partner to partner love. I believe I am here today sent by the Lord to tell you about the love that conquered it all, to tell you about the love in which a man from Bethlehem was, bur was bruised, beaten, pierced in his hands and his feet, and crucified for you. In which a man, while he was getting crucified, alive, dying, saw through time, looked at you, looked at me, and said, you're worth it. Amen. Even though you may never receive the Lord, even though you may never acknowledge the Lord, he died for you and for me because he loves us. I believe that loving Jesus wholeheartedly enables us to love others. Right? In Luke 10, 27, the Lord left us with two commandments. Number one is, Lord, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And number two is, love thy neighbor. But you cannot have number two if you don't have number one. You cannot love somebody if you don't love Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, if you don't love Jesus, you cannot love Someone, you won't understand the full concept of love. You won't understand the full concept of death to self, death to sin, surrenderance. What it is, sacrifice for someone else, to die for someone else. You don't understand that. You won't grasp that concept if you don't love Jesus and if you don't know Jesus. And at the same time, it's not just that, but as Christians, as people, as believers, right? If, if, we, if you look up now the word Christian, right, it, it's, it's something like, you know, Christ-like. And us as Christians, our ultimate goal is to be like Jesus. Our daily prayer should be, Holy Spirit, make me more like Jesus. We got to talk like Jesus. We got to see things like Jesus. We got to love like Jesus and aspire to walk how Jesus walked on this earth. That's right. And I know at times it's hard. I know it's easier said than done. But if one day, that one day at a time, you could be 1% better every single day, that's all it takes. So I wanna share a quick story of a recent encounter I had with the Lord um, that after this day, it has just tore me up to the core. I know. A lot of people experienced it as well. But it's a day that I could stand here and tell you that I completely fell in love with the Lord all over again. This was about last month. I remember it was the week of my birthday. That my birthday was December 15th. That was a Friday. December 14th is a Thursday. And I had just came back from work. Some of my friends had gone up to Orlando to a conference. And um, I procrastinated too much. and. 
I thought we were going to do something fun for my birthday, which we did, but not that weekend. I thought I was going to be busy. Um, so that's why I didn't really go to Orlando. But that same night, I remember coming back home early from work, and I was sick. I was, I was going to go to the hospital the next day. Um, but that night, I just stayed home, tried to sleep it out. But they sent a link to the conference live, the Jesus Image conference live uh, on YouTube. Pop it open. I was like, look, I'm sick, but I'm not going to have food to eat tomorrow at lunch, so I got a meal prep. So I get up, and it's about like 9, 10. I start cooking. I have my laptop open in the kitchen, and I just put the conference, and then, you know, the speaker was speaking, and the spirit was just moving as much as it was moving at that conference. It was moving in my house. And I don't know about you, but I serve an omnipotent God. Who, what exactly what you felt here earlier is the same thing you could feel in your house. It's the same thing you could feel in your car. It's the same thing, if you're like me, you could feel in the bathroom. We call it the holy bathroom, right? <laughs> but the Lord has encountered me in so many ways there. And it's just the love of God. God is so good. We're going on. So <sighs> I remember I was almost done cooking. And then I just, like, I just stopped for a second, and I'm focusing in on, on, the, on the speaker preaching at the, at the conference, and I just felt such a tug from the Lord, like, thank God for conviction. It's such a beautiful thing, right? And I felt like, kind of like the conviction, and the Lord, like, just told me, you should be there. So we know that obedience plays a big role in our walks with the Lord, Obedience opens doors to, to op- opens doors to blessings, right. and obedience. You know, we 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 pl- we please the Lord. We obey the Lord. We obey His commandments. And I remember the Lord had told me that. So my thing was, number one, I got to call out of work. Number two, I got to tell my mom that I'm leaving, right? And I don't know about y'all, but my mom, like she says, I I, I go out too much. She says that I'm never home, uh, <laughs> which I don't know if it's true, but yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but so that goes on, and, and I was like, Lord, you know what? If, if it is your will and this is really you, Lord, my mom will say yes without question, right? So I'm cooking. My mom's always going to sleep. I was like, Mommy. She could tell you. She's right there. <laughs> I go like, Mommy. Bang. So she comes to the kitchen. And she, she, for a second, we're watching, we're watching the conference, and I'm like, yeah, like, you know, like, people from church are there, this and this and that. Like, you know, I wanted to go, but I thought I was going to be busy for my birthday, but I wasn't. Um, and I was like, Mom, but I really felt like the Lord told me to go. I really felt like he said I should be there. And, like, I knew it was the Lord when my mom said, okay. Right? No questions asked. Right? Well, she did ask, how, how am I getting there? Which led me to my second point. I went on a bright line. Right? Thank God for a first responder discount. I was able to grab a bright line. I, I called my sergeant, my supervisor, and I was like, I need a personal day tomorrow. Right? Um, so, whatever. I was like, Mom, it's done. She's like, okay, did you pack your bags? I was like, yeah, yeah. Pack my backpack really quick. I was like, at 630, we got to be done in Brickwell at the bright line station. And she was like, okay. And I really knew it was the Lord, Lord. When my mom goes like, levantate at four in the morning. I was like, oh, we got like two hours to go, mom. But glory to God, I was able to get on that train. And, and on the way there, you know, I was texting my friends that were there. And it was just, they were like, yo, you got to get here. Like, this is, this is amazing. And I was just looking at it through YouTube on my phone while on the train. And, and the, like, I'm telling you, the, like, how... I don't know, has anybody ever been in complete love with the Lord where just like the smallest thing just makes you cry? I promise you, like throughout this season, the Lord has brought out the cry baby in me. It, it is, man, like I just look, like I'll go outside early in the morning before going to work and the sun is rising. And I was just like, Lord, look at that. Like, <laughs> like it's just... It's just so beautiful. Like, like, you see the reddish coming up and then by the time I get to work, it's just, I'm like, Lord... Man, we had gone over, over, the, over the Christmas break. We went with some of my friends to, to Oregon, and we went to this park. It was like a forest, and I took a picture of, like, there was this tree with, like, big branches just sticking out. And I remember putting my phone in, and I just see it. And I looked back down, and I was like, man, Lord, like, what? <laughs> like, like, and I was like, why am I crying? But the Lord just makes us so sensitive to his presence and to his creation. 
and we look at the stars and the creation literally sings his glory. So back to my story, right? <laughs> right. So whatever, we get to conference. Um, I get to Orlando. We get dropped off at the at the Orlando airport. Cause we get to the to the convention thingy, right? And and from the door, like I'm t- I'm not even kidding. Like from the lobby area, which Orange County was in Orange County Convention Center. Yeah. So then, like from the lobby, that place is huge. You could just feel the difference in the atmosphere. You could feel the Holy Spirit working. I remember throughout conference, we were there the rest of the day. We wouldn't leave till like 9 or 10, 11 around there. And we're, we're there for long hours. If you've ever been to a conference, get ready. They're like 16 hours. Don't be scared. It feels like two. No, it doesn't. All right. <laughs> yeah. So then we're there, man. We're sitting. And every, every session, and everybody here who went could tell you, every session was a wreck. The Holy Spirit will come up and, and just destroy you in so many ways he in a good way though um like like everything everything like he was he like i really believe the holy spirit showed us jesus in a new way like never before right day one goes on friday goes on and saturday comes saturday we're there the whole day as well right but what really impacted me the most was it wasn't even at conference right we we came back to this airbnb and it was late it was a saturday night and I know Yuli and I, we had to wake up early to come, and Gabby too, well, you know, for Gabby Joe that same night. So we had to come back early Sunday morning to, for service, um, and we had to go sleep. We're tired, We're, you know. Um, and then I remember Joseph goes like, guys, we got a debrief. And I was like, bro, we just, you know, we didn't go on a mission, right? But the Lord at that moment goes like, man, just sit down, right? And it's again through that obedience, I was like, okay. When I am telling you from the first person that spoke to the second person that spoke immediately, the Lord filled the room. And what we meant to be a 20 minute debrief turned into an hour and a half, two hour prayer session where prophecies were spoken, where tongues were spoken. And the Lord just completely just took over like, like it's, it's undescribable. Like, if you were there, you'd understand. But it's just something that I remember reading in the upper room how the spirit just filled and everybody just burst out into tongues. We were in an upper room. And I'll tell you this. I was born and raised in Alpha and Omega Church. I was born and raised a Christian. I was born and raised being taught the Lord's ways. Because my mom wouldn't, she'd hit me if I didn't, right? I love you, mom. All right? So, literally, th- thank God for moms or parents or grandparents or uncles or aunts who grab you, grabbed you by the ear and brought you to church. I guarantee you I would be nothing without my mom doing that. And many of us in here would never be anything without our parents like that. So, I remember we just go in. And at that moment, where was I? I forgot. Well, a little brain fart. Sorry. So I know what it is to, to sit at these very same chairs we're sitting at and not know Jesus. I know what it is to be a volunteer and not know Jesus. I know what it is to be a leader and not know Jesus. I know what it is to come to church three, four, five times a week and not know Jesus. For... What I believe was close to 20 something years, I'm 23 now, of not fully knowing Jesus. It's left me speechless in a way that I'm like, how is it possible? But knowing the Lord now, he has allowed me to understand that we could be so close yet so far from his heart. And I, like, I remember nothing, nothing ever since that they have this thing where I go like, you know, so that was Manny before December 17 at 1, 2, 3 in the morning, right? And, and I, like, I, don't, I don't say that like, I, just as a joke, but I say that because the Lord has allowed me a new way to see things. The Lord has allowed me a new way to treat people, a new way to love people. So I'm not telling you up here that commandment number one Right, which is love the Lord your God with all your heart. And number two, 
Love your neighbor, sorry, right? I'm not here to tell you that just for it to be an example. I am telling you here because I am a living testimony. I am living proof of the love of God and how it changes you completely. The way you lead, the way you serve, if you're a volunteer or a leader, right? The way you speak, the way people see you, the way you carry yourself, it changes everything. Jesus is in everything once you fully understand the concept of loving Jesus. Once you have for real encountered the love of God. I remember there was, I remember I, I really encountered the Lord for the first time. This is after years of, of, of growing up in ministry. I remember the Lord one day completely wrecked me while my junior year of high school. And at that moment, I was like, okay, like God is evident now in my life. Like I know Jesus. I remember I spoke in tongues for the first time. You know, I, I really felt like the Holy Spirit was here. You know, like I do, like I know how to feel it now. But at the same time, I was still so far. I remember at times where I'd come back home and I'd come to church and I'd see people just completely on their knees. They're laying out flat on the floor like this, which I wouldn't recommend because, you know, it's the floor. But that's the love for God. It just leads you to jump around the place and it leads you to get on your knees and shout and scream. And then what may seem crazy to somebody who doesn't believe, we call it glory. We call it glory to the Lord. Yeah. That person is crowning Jesus. So I remember there was nights I lay in bed and, and I'd think, Lord, I want, like, show me how to love you like that. And I know some of us have said the same thing. Lord, just let me learn how to love you. Let me, like, like that, what that person has, I want to have it too. Like, Jesus, just let me feel you in a way that changes me forever. And even through, 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 I'm not going to lie to you, I'm here standing as a testimony to be an example to you. Through serving in the church, I know what it is to be here serving the Lord, but still being in the world. I know what it is, my mom can tell you, I know what it is to still serve, then go out and come back at four or five in the morning in places we shouldn't be at all. If the Holy Spirit isn't welcome, why are you going there? If the Lord hasn't told you clearly, go in there and preach, then why are we going in there? into things of the world, we can no longer compromise our faith. We are in times where we can't compromise our belief for the feelings of people in this world. Too many of us, Carol, we can't post too many Christian content on our Instagram or we can't promote it too much because you know some people we know might get scared. We're not here to compromise. We can no longer compromise our faith. Talk about Jesus. He gave us the great commission. He gave us this very book that I hold here to speak his word. For he came to make disciples of all nations. I love it how John says, I am not the Messiah. I am simply here to prepare the way. We are here to prepare the way for the Lord. We are here to prepare the way for the king. Some of us are asleep and I don't blame you. I was too for the longest. But I learned what death to self is. I learned what death to sin is, dying to your sin. And some of you may think, oh, like you got to die. No, 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 listen. It's more of a spiritual death where you die, surrender to your sin. Leave it at the feet of the Lord. It's going to be hard, but I promise you the reward is phenomenal. The Lord does not leave his children. We have promises over and over from the Lord. So I thought I would never be able to fully love him. Now I see everybody getting wrecked and, and all these things and just being sold out for Jesus. I was like, God, I want to I wanna say I'm sold out for Jesus. I want to like say, God, that if other people get prosecuted, persecuted in, in other countries for you, God, like that, that one, one day I thought that and I was like, what if we're getting persecuted here? You know, glory to God, we're not really getting persecuted here like they are in other countries. Yeah. But what the Lord cares more about is your yes. yes. Your yes to him. 
Your yes is so important. It's the obedience. And when we say yes, God, your way is the only way. So again, one of the many ways I was able as a kid now that I fully con- con- now that I fully know the love of Jesus, I asked him, I was like, Lord, why couldn't I see it before? And I felt like the Lord was like, it was right in front of you, you know? And sometimes we can't see it. Sometimes the enemy just puts a blind yeah. and he doesn't allow us to see the glory of God. For our friends living in the world, we need to pray for them because they have a blind in their eyes that the enemy has put and they cannot see the glory of Jesus. They cannot see the cross and they think they're living the best life. But the Lord has put you in their life for a purpose and for a reason. As Christians, when we get up there, we're gonna be accountable for every life that was presented to us. What are you gonna tell the Lord? We can no longer compromise. Growing up as a kid, um, I did, I was born and raised here, but on Saturdays, my uncle and my aunt, they're pastors, and we would go to this other church across town, um, and we, we were well known with, with the pastors there and the pastor's family, and you know, we, we, we kind of like, you could say we grew up with them, but one of the many ways the Lord showed me his love was through his protection. Out of about eight, nine, or 10 people in that group, for the glory of the Lord, the only one standing strong in the faith today, and I don't say this to boast, is my sister and I. The current, one, the current ones serving that have gone through it, and we have allowed the Lord's will to be done, is my sister and I, and we could testify of that. And when I asked the Lord, the Lord said, ah, there's a protection, there's a covering over you. The other day, my mom tells me, you know, because if you're going to lead a ministry, you got to lead in your house first. That's your first ministry. So I remember my mom has been telling me, she's like, hey, lead a, lead a, you know, lead your connect group here, you know, but like with my mom and my sister, right? And man, we entered, we entered a moment of just worship where we sat down, all three of us sitting in the living room and the Lord just came in, started speaking and I, I, I want to I say uh, I'm prophetic, Right? But the Lord has allowed me to see things. He has shown me visions. He has spoken. And then when he says speak, I speak on them. I remember at that point, we're sitting down, worshiping, just praying. And I'm, I'm talking in tongues. The Holy Spirit is just moving right there in my house. The Lord just allowed me to see my mom in the middle, grabbing my sister and me on the other side. And there was a protection over us. He allowed, he allowed me to see that, this, that the hand of the Lord has been over me and my family. And now I understand it's only through the love of God. It's only through the love of God. And we we, we consider love to be many things. And we're like, we think love is different. We think, oh, like, I want to love this person better. Love Jesus first. I don't have nobody for Valentine's. Let the Lord be your Valentine. Right? Like, we, we, we expect, we expect to just, you know, like, for my singles out there. <laughs> like, we, we can't just focus on, oh, like, Lord, we're waiting for somebody. We want somebody, Lord. How's your relationship with God? Brother, if you can't lead a relationship with God, you can't lead a relationship with anybody else. And vice versa. That's good. <laughs> so learn to love Jesus. As I mentioned before, the book John 3.16 shows us the Lord's love for us like no other verse. And if you could put it up, it says, For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so while reading this, I, the Lord just grabbed me and just twisted me completely and Everything in the Bible, you read Genesis to Revelations, you have Jesus all over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everything points back to Jesus and Christ crucified. 
Just think about it, how, how God just, how much more does he love you that everything in the Bible, right, was meant to lead back to Jesus because he wanted his son to get all the glory. He wanted Jesus to be recognized king of nations, king above all kings. Yet John 3.16 tells us, for God so loved us, the world, that he still sent his son to die for us. So how much more does the Lord love you? And I don't know about you, but I was that type where I was like, it's impossible for the Lord to love me. I've said some not so nice things. I don't know, I haven't done the smartest things. Like why, like, why would the Lord love me? Why would he love somebody like me? And the Lord just died. I understand now that the Lord just died for us. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter if you're still struggling with that sin, if you're still hanging out at those clubs, if you're still talking in a rude way, the Lord still died for you. And these are times where the Lord is giving you an opportunity to, to come back. And I believe tonight the Lord is knocking on that door. And he's saying, hey, son, son, are you ready? The Lord is knocking. And I don't know about you, but man, this is the best feeling in the world. To know and to love Jesus. The man who was crucified by you and for me. Understanding this love, we are able to love others. We truly love God. When we truly love God, we know God. And when we know God, we're able to act like him, which essentially, as I said, is our goal. And I have seen the change not only in my life and, and just the way I, I talk again and, and it's just, just the way that I am. Like I just think there's a different perspective and the Lord has allowed me to see a different perspective on love and on other people. And you know something when the Lord says, if they slap you and won't you turn to the other and let them slap you too there, I was like, whoa. You know, like, <laughs> I'm from the south side. Like, I'm gonna slap back. No, I'm kidding. But it's love. We understand now and then now, also, uh, I'm taking a Bible class for school and one of the questions was how, what's, what would you say is the worst thing about this world? And a, well, no, it was a reflection on hope. So it was like, out of this dark, dark world, how can you still have hope? And I was like, having Jesus. Yeah. As Christians, it is so important that we understand what spiritual warfare is. It's a topic that we must learn. And if you want to know, I just read this book and, and it just explained to me everything and I have a better understanding. So after service, come and ask me and I'll show you. But we need to understand that when we go out into a dark world, we know it's, you know, the, the word also teaches us that, you know, our battle isn't against flesh and, and blood and, and bone, it's against spiritual realms and dark principalities. We're not up against humans, we're up against Satan. Yeah, that's right. And that's something we need to understand. You know, as, as a first respondent, I know some of my coworkers are here, we could talk about how literally we see the darkness of this world, even through little kids. We see how the enemy has come in to attack what the Lord meant to be something great and something beautiful, like a family, and tear it up completely. He's here to kill, steal, and destroy what the Lord has meant for good. He, he turns it into a bad thing. And it's crazy. It's scary. It's scary to go out into this world. And in my line of work, you see this every day. You meet people in their worst day. And as Christians, all we could do is just pray. I believe the Lord is going to work. And he is working. It's so beautiful how we see Jesus moving. And I'm not telling you all these things to like scare you all, like Satan and this and this and that. Well, there's no more times to preach soft messages. There's no more time to, to pat you guys softly in the back. There's no more time for that. We are in times in what some people, some scholars consider to be the final greatest move of the Holy Spirit before Jesus comes again. And that is the great move of the Holy Spirit. And like I said this past Sunday while I was hosting, we, we know revival. We've heard the term revival. And we've seen Asbury. You know, we've seen it in California. We've seen it here. And, but we sometimes, like at least for myself, I speak for myself, I, sometimes I just considered it to be within like Asbury. Okay, cool, it's just there. It's not like it's everywhere. No. 
we are living in a day and age where revival is happening across states, across nations, and across the globe. There is people out there right now that some of us know that are sharing the gospel that the Lord has spoken to and they have gone on behalf of the Lord and they're sharing the gospel. They're bringing back lives to Jesus. There is such a hunger, Gen Z. There's such a hunger for this generation. There is such a hunger. People are hungry for Jesus. And the other day I talked to somebody who's a believer and they're like, oh, I don't see it like that. If you're not open to it, if you don't, if you don't allow the Lord to show you, you won't see it. But it's so evident that it's nearly impossible to see it. So again, we must surrender and the bank will start coming up. We must surrender to the Lord. And it's not easy. I know what it is to be in sin. I know what it is to be struggling with thoughts. Understanding that it is nothing but a scheme of the enemy to try to stop us. Sometimes we feel like we have so many, so many burdens on our shoulders. Sometimes we feel like, uh, like the whole world is coming down on us. But friend, I'm here to tell you that the proof of the purpose in you, that, sorry, that the pressure in you is proof of the purpose in you. For you were marked by God. The word says that he knows you before you were born. He created you at his image. We complain so much about our lives when Jesus just says, let me in. And the Lord wants in today. He wants in on your life. Many of you here tonight may feel like loving Jesus is such a task. Like it's so hard. Maybe you're like me right now, a couple months ago, pleading to the Lord in my bed, Jesus, show me yourself. Holy Spirit, show me Jesus. This love that they talk about, let me feel that love. I believe that today the Lord, He wants your yes. I believe today that the Lord is knocking today and I declare that some of you guys will turn today to know what it is to completely love Jesus. My friends, this isn't just a, a service thing. This is something you got to take home. This is something you got to break down. This is something you got to go home, spend your time in secret place, in the secret place, talk to God and break it down. For the Lord might reveal something different to you about love.